introduction. So what's this course? So I guess by now, if you're here, you've seen all of the schedule online. So you know the basic contents of the days. So the early days are really quite, well, slow, you might say. It's only towards the end of the second day that you might start seeing things that you don't know if you've been using Python for science for a while now. But then towards day three, you start seeing things which are probably new to a lot, a lot of people. And then day four are like the kinds of things that you need to do in order to um, like really make full use of your work and people all over, like if, if they're able to use it. So if the early days are too boring or something, don't worry, um, just keep coming back and you'll see what you need. And we'll adjust the schedule as needed. So when things go um, fast or slow, we'll adjust. We actually have plenty of buffer time, so we expect some things to slide to later days. So how would you attend this course? So it's live streamed, as you know, because you're here. Everyone can attend. Uh, you'll see, we'll talk about details of that in a little bit. But this also means there's different pathways to people. So some people will pay close attention, do all the exercises. You've registered, you're in the university breakout room, so you can get help there. Some people may be a little bit less active, and you'll watch and like type long. You'll see the examples and the solutions, but not worry too much. That's fine. And some people, you might be here just to see the general concepts. So basically, um, you will um, like, like this, it, if this is a bit too advanced for you, if you're just learning Python, then maybe you'll just watch and see some expert practices and then come back to it later. And they're all valid, and you might choose different options for different lessons. And that's fine and expected. So we'll basically just take it as it comes. Who are we? So this course is run by Alto Scientific Computing at Alto University in Finland. Um, it's made in collaboration with code refinery partners. So we have registrations in Sweden and Norway. And here with me is, uh, for example, Johan from KTH in Sweden. So we have instructors from all of these different places. We have accounted eight instructors um, and about that many other helpers too. Um, yeah. So practicalities. Um, yeah. So basically, live streaming is different than most courses you've probably been. Let's talk about how it works. So we have a live stream broadcast, which anyone in the world can watch. Um, we'll have pauses for exercises. So we'll say, OK, now we're going to an exercise. Here's what you should do. And then the stream will go to HackMD, and we'll just wait. And then um, you can either work alone or go to your university's Zoom session and get help for the exercises. There's different kinds of parts that we can have here. We can have talking and demos. We can have type along, which is basically done on the live stream. You can have exercises, so either alone or in Zoom, or you might even form your own group where you're working in person or via your own uh, video conference meetings. And of course, breaks, so often throughout there. So we have some chat here. Although we don't use the Twitch chat most of the time. So what we use is HackMD instead. And why is this? Because when you ask a question, then you can get an answer asynchronously in here. So basically, people can keep asking, and multiple people can be answered, and it can be all sorted nicely. And then we'll publish this at the end of the course. You switch to the different modes by clicking on these buttons on the top. Um, and I guess in this course in particular, since we had so many people attending, we actually don't have, um, we haven't given it out publicly. So only the people that have registered have this link. And we're sort of just going to see how it works and then can adjust later. Um, since the HackMD is public, don't include names or identities in the HackMD because it will be permanently archived. We'll try to go remove all the names we see, but just you know, don't have names in there. Let's not collect information if not needed. 
So it's very possible that HackMD will get overloaded with all the people that are using it. This is sort of um, expected. Um, and we have, we, a, yeah. we have a plan for that. Yeah. Also in the so the one thing that we are going to do is that we will uh, continuously migrate copies from this main HackMD to have the document the live document not too long. Yeah. So if, so if you see contents having been migrated away, it, it's not lost. It's just been moved. Yeah. And at the top and I, of it, you can see a link to the old hack and, or the, where it's being copied. Up there at the top, old questions are copied to this one. Yeah. Anything else about the HackMD stuff? I think that's all. Um, I, could, yeah, I could say one thing. So yeah. the, the way we're going to work with HackMD is, as Richard said, it's asynchronous. So questions and discussions will be done there continuously. Then often questions will come up when you're doing the exercises. And then we will answer them. And also we will highlight one or two questions when we are back in, in the plenum in, in the stream. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and we as instructors we coordinate them while you're working on the exercise, we coordinate what are perhaps of the most general interest, and, and then we highlight that in, in voice and video. Yeah. And all while we're teaching, us instructors have the HackMD open. So like I have my workspace, my HackMD, so we can immediately see when people are chatting things and saying things. Um, let's see. Uh, what else? Yeah. OK, the screen arrangement. So you may have noticed we have this really weird looking vertical screen share. And there's a reason for that. So we realized that the like full screen, full HD screen share doesn't really help anyone. So we've got it shared so you can arrange Twitch using half the screen like you see here. And then the other half is for your own workspace. So it may take some time to figure out how to arrange Twitch this way, but the basic idea, last night I was testing, you had to hide the chat and then go to theater mode and then you can get it where it looks pretty nice, like this here. Um, yeah. OK. So in the course, there's going to be a lot of information. There's going to be all these windows. There's Twitch, there's HackMD, there's Zoom. Like, How does someone even manage all of this stuff together? Well, here's what we recommend. So we have the screen share and the lecture to Twitch. That's the main thing you should focus on when it's going. Second to that, during that and during exercises, you should focus on your own type along in exercises. Then whenever you have questions or might be bored, you can go look at HackMD and read it and see what kinds of questions people are asking and so on. Um, yes. Then during the exercise sessions, when we say, OK, it's time for an exercise, then um, you go to the Zoom or your exercise group. And, heck, and the live stream won't have any audio at that time. So basically, once you start hearing this stuff in the background, you'll know it's time to come back. And then, of course, there's the lesson web page where we have the material that we're following along. Hmm, I think I said this about when we switch between the different things. So the main lectures is the live stream. Exercises is the other exercise point. And then, yeah, you hear the stream come back. So there's many different things that can go wrong. And actually, when something goes wrong, it's sort of exciting, isn't it? We get to do it live and figure things out. So well, the first two are sort of obvious. The lessons are either too simple or too advanced. We have right now more than 250 people watching the live stream. So what we're going to do is going to be too simple and too advanced for many people there. Um, that's just a fact of life. But you know, you can sort of watch and wait for the part that's more interesting to you, or switch to a uh, type along rather than doing exercises and so on. Instructors might make mistakes. Well, this is by design. So constantly we see the best feedback is that whenever we um, when we do something wrong, then um, mm, 
yeah uh when you make a mistake yeah. you'll see how we recover and that's how you learn the best okay if hackmd stops responding just wait it will recover we will remove um we'll remove some old stuff and if it gets really bad we'll switch to our backup solution and see how it goes so if our if the stream dies that basically means something has happened to my computer or my internet co connection or Helsinki in general, who knows. In that case, stick around, the stream will resume soon. Unless it's something like the power has gone out, which, well, hasn't happened during the last year and a half I've been working at home, but well, anything's possible. The whole internet could die. So this actually happened during the um, a course we had in June. So the Fastly content distribution network had problems. And well, we just sort of kept going there were videos and we managed to get through that was a pretty fun one if you ask me so videos are published um hmm. let's see so that means you can review even immediately so twitch will archive everything we save for 14 days so if you miss something you will never fall too far behind and youtube will have them soon so next up being respectful and helpful so this is not just from us to you all but everyone's in this together so here's some four little pieces of advice so everyone's at different levels and that's expected so um everyone's learning different kinds of things and so on that's fine um Everyone is both a learner and a teacher. So some of our instructors have signed up to teach something because we want to learn more about it. So we're paired with another instructor who will sort of guide us through and will take on the role of the student that's learning things. Basically the voice of the audience, that's fun. In the breakout rooms and with your groups, take some time to check in with each other and see how things are going, like ask, are things going okay? Like, are you getting what you're needing? We'll ask that too in HackMD and ask about this and tell us. And when something isn't going right, going right, just tell us. So it could be like the we're speaking too quietly or the screen is not being shared correctly and so on. And that's sort of unfortunate, but well, the way stuff works. Um, let's see. Yeah, so we are not giving credit points for this course because we don't have a way to track attendance and to deal with all of the assignments. Um, yeah, if you want to keep in touch, um, you can do that here. Um, well, you can join our Code Refinery chat if you'd even like to help out with the course some. And after this course, we have other workshops to do. Um, in fact, our main code refinery workshop is really popular and also online these days. So, yeah, with that being said, what else do we have? We could, if you could perhaps uh, walk through the, the high chat and theater mode okay. on Twitch, how to do that yeah. would be great. Let's see. So here, this is... If I go to theater mode and then actually just theater mode works. Oh, yeah. Okay. This is recursive. So here we see, yeah. Okay. This is Twitch and I click here to go to theater mode. And somehow for me, the chat is already hidden. And yeah. you're about Same to here. get really confused because you see the workshop in the workshop. And yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh yeah. Um so if the chat is visible, there is a button on the top left of the chat area that uh, if you have it already it says collapse. Yeah. I'm not sure why it's not visible for me here, but well, anyway, uh, 
Yeah. Okay, so what should we do now? Should we proceed to the first lesson about Jupiter?